a quick video on a strip down of the Hope race lever. Um, probably one of the easier levers to do. It's kind of designed for cross country kind of use. Um, it's a very kind of small lightweight lever and I think you can run up to the E4 caliper with these. So yeah, T10 torques on the top, which is pretty much the standard thing for all the Hopes, or at least after a certain year. They all went for Torx bolts, probably because the Allen key ones used to get rounded off quite easily. So you've got your two bolts, and then your top cap there, and you probably might recognise that, because that's from the 2007 Mini, so it's the same top cap and rubber diaphragm system. And um, then what you're going to do is just take this bolt out here, that's your kind of pivot holding bolt. And I'm just going to remove that. As far as I remember, they should be the same size as the top cap bolts. So it doesn't really matter which one you put in there. So yeah, those are all the same sizes. And um, then what you're going to need is on the bottom there is the little circlip. If I get my circlip pliers underneath there. There we go, this one's unusual, I don't know, looks a bit weird with that bit sticking out, that's all, looks kind of strange. Um, but yeah, we're going to open this little circlip. Yeah. What you want to do with this is just open it enough to get it over, you don't want to overstretch it, because it will essentially go out of shape. your little clip there and what that means is now that you've taken that bolt out and the clip on the bottom you should be able to push this through if it does get stuck just get <coughs> something to help you um, I'm just going to use this product and push that through here and there we go that comes through there's your little aluminium pivot that somebody's tried to Maybe paint green, I think, for Hope Team Green. <laughs> That's just a guess. And um, then what we're going to do is take a 2mm Allen key, and we're going to screw the reach adjuster screw all the way in. And that should free our lever from the system. I would say that's a bit too close, so I'm just going to zoom out. Turn that off like that. I'd say at some stage someone probably put that on there, which is a newer brass bushing to stop the lever wiggling about too much. Um, and then what you can see on here, I don't actually have a replacement part, but ideally you'd want to replace this plate because it's split on the rubber. Um, so this is a T10 Torx, but it's a security bit version, so it's going to look Something like this, if we can get it to focus. There we go, it's just got a little hole in the center of the bit. So we're just going to pop that into there. Undo this and we're just going to keep our thumb on there because the piston spring is going to want to push that out. Well, that's a good start, it's very tight in there. Which always makes me a little bit cautious because it's only aluminium the body. I'm hoping that's turning. It shouldn't really take too much effort for you to do that. So I might have to investigate that after. Are we out yet? Almost. Yeah, we're done. So we can pull that out the whole thing, unit all together see that's called a retaining plate the black part and that's your push rod so yeah pretty uh, little bit manky on the back and then what we have is a dirty piston which we need a tiny sometimes they do drop out but we're going to need something very small to put in that hole there I really should get something made of plastic so I don't scratch the bore just slot that in and you'll fill it butt up to the piston 
and just slowly push it, try and keep it nice and centralised. That essentially is your uh, master cylinder stripped apart. And I will give that a little clean up down there, spray it with alcohol spray and a cotton bud. And here is your piston system, which is a little bit dirty as well. The spring comes off. And you're just left with the piston and the seals. Just gonna have a little look at them. Just trying to see. There we go. Just trying to see if there's any defects on there. Because if there's a tiny defect on there, it's best that you just replace it. it just saves you hassle. And because they're so cheap anyway. Um, and I do believe they're the same as the. I have to check it. I'll put it in the description anyway. They're the same as the Hope Minis. So B H B S P. I forgot now, 108 and a HBSP 109. So yeah, I think they're alright. A little bit dirty. Sometimes the dot fluid solidifies on there. But yeah, they seem alright. And that will get cleaned up, and then we'll put it all back together. So yeah, with this one, we've cleaned it all up. Um, this one isn't, isn't that great, to be honest with you. Um, if we look in there if we can pick it up you can actually see the metal and normally that should be anodized black if you look at the rest of the bore it's just black but that little bit was quite a large section just in there is exposed metal and uh, what I noticed on this piston is that if we try and get that to focus on this there we go you probably won't see it because of the light but from about here on the piston all the way around to about there so maybe like a centimetre or so, it's quite badly scratched. If you've got stuff like that, then could be game over really. Um, so I will have to test this and make sure it's all right. But yeah, that's a, quite a big issue. Could be that a bit of grit got down there and just got squashed between the two surfaces. So yeah, that's something I'll have to try and rectify. Regardless of the piston damage, we're gonna put it all back together anyway, just to show you. It's very quick uh, an easy process from here on in put the uh, spring back onto there if you want you can put dot fluid on these seals when you put them in um, doesn't really act as a great lubricant but I guess it's better than maybe nothing I don't really do it if your seals are all in good condition they'll just slot down there anyway so yeah, we're just gonna pop that to there give that a little wiggle and then move that back and forth and make sure it's nice and smooth Everything seems alright, even though it's got that kind of mark in the barrel, it seems you know, to be pretty smooth on there. Then we're going to grab our, uh, what they call the retaining plate. And if you've used the Tech Free stuff and took those apart, um, you'll probably recognise this kind of design. So that's going to essentially sit there. Now oh, actually, we need our plunger to go with that as well. Just check the threads on there, make sure they're alright, because they're only little. And that's going to pop through there like so. And then we can place that onto here. I'm going to grab our little security bit. And pop that onto the tool. And then what I'm going to do is compress the piston. And then we put this into the hole. And we can tighten that together. Just nip that up, don't need to go crazy with it. But when you do that, you want to let me grab a something to touch. There we go. So you want to make sure that the kind of black rubber coating is below this little lip, and that's why we press down on the piston. If we were to tighten it and we didn't press down on this lever, it could feel tight on this side, but it's actually not seated properly. So yeah, it's always best to kind of push on that when you tighten that bolt. Um, so yeah, this is like I said relatively straightforward and we're just going to thread our lever back on there and as long as we get that started on a few threads we can then use the allen key there we go and that's easy and then we'll get our two millimeter allen key again and we're just going to turn this anti-clockwise now zoom out a little bit there we go move you out the way and 
there's your reach adjuster sorted and then you've got your lever like that we're going to drop our pivot through the middle to kind of wiggle the lever back and forth to align it and then you've got to make sure that that hole is going to align with that hole so if you had it like that obviously it's not going to align so you have to kind of turn it to there let me try and get that in there we go let me just adjust that and then what I'm going to do is put the bolt in the in there and secure that lever uh, pivot in place Just nip that up, it doesn't have to be tight. And there's your basic kind of lever function already. And then you just need to put this little clip back on now. If you do find this a little bit like wide, you can get um, like a set of pliers and try and squeeze it back together just to reduce the diameter of it, just in case you kind of stretched it when you took it off. And on this bit here, there is like a little groove in there and that's where the clip sits into so we're just going to open that as much as we need to even with these kind of pliers that are made for this stuff it can be a little bit tricky to hold on to I don't want to get my glove stuck underneath there we go and then that's on there and that's essentially uh, your lever put that on that and then you'd be your two uh, t10 torque screws and when you do bleed them when you do these two bolts up just go back and forth with them don't just do one really tight because it might lever up like that and then you find you might not get that other end down so it's always best to kind of go back and forth with them the other thing is if it's dirty in there which this one is quite dirty you don't want to leave that dirt in there because when you bleed and then you use the brake that's just going to go into your brake system and potentially it will block up the little holes in here. So I'm just going to spray some alcohol spray in there. Hopefully work that back and forth and that should hopefully loosen up some of the dirt. And then you can tap that out there and give that a little clean up. Because if you block that port then you've got to take this little retainer plate off and try and unblock it. Whereas if you just kind of try to maintain it and clean it up, then it's all good. So yeah, hopefully that was of some use to anyone that's got these kind of levers out there. And just these bolts to do up and that's it. So yeah, there he is, Hope Race. Um, I don't know the difference between the Race and the Race Evo. But yeah, this one is the Race Evo, as you can see there. But that's essentially it. We do, have a, we do have a little bit of play on the lever. Um, what tends to happen is the bushing wears, but so does the, the aluminium, I guess, would wear out a little bit. So even if you do get a new bushing, you will often end up with a little bit of play on there. But yeah, there we go, Hope uh, Race Evo. So what I wanted to do with this was just go through this end on here. So it's got a different end to most of the Hope levers. So this is a tech free, and it's got some thread on the inside. So when you connect, so this is a hose connector, you'd have your hose coming out of here. So when you would connect this, you would put a little copper washer on here and you would screw that into there and then you would just nip that up and tighten it. With the Race Evo, also on the XCR levers as well, you don't need um, the end anymore. So you would take that off. You wouldn't need that part and you would keep this, which is the shroud. And then you would need a little copper washer. There's a tiny little copper washer that goes in there and it just screws onto there direct so yeah I guess it's their way of saving a, a little bit of weight so I just wanted to go through with that so there you go race uh, Evo I hope